Hello, today's presentation is on visual image interpretation for preparation of land use land cover mapping from standard FCC. Now this is a very important part of your curriculum. It is also taught in semester 6 in uh, Remote Sensing GIS Practical and it is also a part of your skill enhancement course in taught in semester 3. I have divided my presentation into two parts. First, I will teach you what are the techniques, broad techniques of visual image interpretation and then I will show you how to do the land use land cover mapping. Now, uh, to prepare a land use land cover map from satellite image, you need to know how we get the satellite image. Now, satellite image is received by remote sensing technique. And remote sensing is the science and art of obtaining information of earth surface. And the information we get, we get, we receive it in form of an image. This is the typical uh, pattern by which the remote sensing process is done. This is, uh, see the satellite on top. It is receiving the radiation of different objects during a uh, sunny time and the sunlight, whatever it is falling on the objects, the radiation which is going, the satellite is trapping it and the database is coming to the base station and from there the satellite image is prepared. Now satellite image or imagery is a photograph and which has great immense number of uses. It has application in agriculture, forestry, coastal zone management, urban planning, etc. And the appearance of this is a typical false color composite. And the appearance of false, the content of the presentation has two parts. In the first part, I will be showing you the techniques of visual image interpretation. And in the second part, I will show you how to prepare the land use land cover maps. Now remote sensing is the science and art of obtaining information of earth surface from a distance. And the information is received in the form of a satellite image. This is the typical structure of how the remote sensing data is processed. For example, remote sensing is done uh, during daytime when the earthly object reflects various radiation, electromagnetic radiation. And the job of the satellite is to capture those electromagnetic radiation through different kind of sensors. And whatever the data is collected by the satellite, it is sent to the ground station. In the ground station, scientists process all this data to prepare a satellite image. Now this is the typical character of a satellite image. It is a type of photograph actually sent by the artificial satellites and uh, all the satellite images have immense number of application. It is used in forestry, agriculture, mapping, road survey, coastal zone management, geological exploration, mountaineering exploration, etc. Now this particular satellite image, it is special because it is a standard FCC. Now it is different from a true color image or other panchromatic black and white image. The standard FCC captures all those information which are collected by the infrared bands, which those information which we cannot see in naked eye. Those information are shown using the color red. All the objects which contain chlorophyll are captured by the infrared band. Now this image interpretation, this is a very highly specialized skill subject. 
Now, not only qualitative information, but quantitative information is collected. And depending upon the structure, function, quality, condition of the objects, different kind of information can be generated. This particular technique is known as photo interpretation and photo interpreter has great job prospects in different parts of the world. In research, in uh, defense, in different scientific explorations, activities, photo interpreter has a great uh, scope to show his skill. Now visual interpretation, visual image interpretation is done in different steps. In the first step, we obtain the image. That is why, what is that? We download or purchase a satellite image. Then in next step, we read the annotation. When we receive a satellite image, there is some information which comes along the satellite image. What is written in those annotations? the location of the places, the latitudinal, longitudinal extension, then there is the projection, time of the uh, uh, photograph, date of the photograph, all those information are very important for in interpretation. So after receiving the satellite image, we do this pre-working and then we start image reading. What we read, we try to identify different features like uh, on the earth's surface, there is forest, there is agricultural land, there is river, there is mountain, there is road, rail. We try to interpret through some techniques and I will teach you those techniques. And after uh, reading, we can also calculate. We can calculate the area, the length and the perimeter of different objects. We, after these four steps, we will do image analysis and finally we will be able to prepare one thematic map. There are different kind of thematic map. Today I will teach you how to prepare a land use land cover map. This is a standard FCC obtained from Indian remote sensing satellite. The sensor is LIS-3. And this is showing part surroundings of Kolkata, River Hooghly and surroundings. You know, different there are different kind of satellite images we obtain from uh, different uh, portals. Like there is USGS, United States. Geological Society, they have their own portal from where we get American satellites. They are freely obtained. And we also have Bhuvan, which is Indian portal from where we can uh, download uh, the Indian remote sensing data. And our interpretation, whatever we collect or download, our interpretation mainly depends on the quality of the image quality of the standard FCC. It is very important. There are two examples. For example, this is first, this is Landsat TM, that is Landsat Thematic Mapper. This particular satellite is, uh, uh, is from America and with a very high spectral resolution. And that is one is least three Indian satellite. If you see the Landsat team data, you can see the little variation can be shown, can be seen inside the river Hooghly. This is due to presence of suspended sediments in the river. So even in the water, if there is suspended sediments, that can be seen in the image. So by that way, we can say that whether the river is shallow or whether the river is very deep, etc. So besides uh, spatial uh, spectral resolution, we have to consider the spatial resolution of the satellite image also. This is least three image of Salt Lake with spatial resolution of 23 meters. And that is Iconos image of Salt Lake area with a spatial resolution of one meter, where you can see the 
you can see the identify the area but you cannot go into the detail but if you see the 1 meter resolution satellite image you can see even each and every minor details because the resolution spatial resolution is 1 meter now after uh, choosing the satellite image with a good uh, spectral resolution or spatial resolution then you have to start image interpretation first you have to obtain the image you have to choose a perfect uh, resolution then you will start interpreting now for interpretation there are 11 interpretation keys those are like tone texture shape size you have to look into the tone texture shape size of the different objects different features those are present on the earth surface and uh, also the skill of the interpreter is also very important in this regard because if you know the if you know the geography if you can associate one particular feature with another particular feature you will be a better image interpreter so uh, this is the first step that is tone here we can see different kind of satellite image and different surface features of relative brightness we can see different kind of color tone actually this is the fundamental thing for identifying the geomorphic and geographic and different kind of features on earth surface here you can see the these are the typical pattern of river and streams in the coastal belt but in the coastal belt the color of the river is shown in two different this is lighter and that is deep again there is mano shalwar in the hilly terrain the color is shown in blue so even a particular feature that is water body it is shown in blue but the blue has a different shades this is because of the amount of sediment in the river if the water is turbid it will appear lighter if it contains sediments suspended sediments it will appear lighter but if it is very deep and the sunlight cannot penetrate inside it will be darker in shade now satellite images are of three types one is panchromatic image as i told you those are black and white images another is true color image that is real world image uh, down below and but we use standard fcc we use standard fcc because that gives the best result it helps in image interpretation because it can identify the infrared band of standard fcc can identify all the objects which contain chlorophyll and that is very essential and important for land use land cover mapping because all the objects containing chlorophyll helps us to identify the forest areas the agricultural land the plantations all those elements which are very essential to uh, know the biodiversity the economic condition of a particular place etc now besides uh, this forest and water body there are some other if you consider the tone if you compare with for example this is this is a forest area of uh, part of a pashchim medinipur district and this was a part of a forest and the forest we thought it will come in red but when we saw the image the color was light green so we went to the field and there we found that trees does not exist now so all the trees were cut down and that was a bare lateritic duri crust so that way we could identify the tone of a bare land eroded lateritic duri crust the color tone of this will be light green or greenish yellow etc now after tone the next important uh, uh, key for identifying the satellite image is texture now texture refers to frequency and tonal variation 
of particular area there are two types of texture that is rough texture and smooth texture the more is tonal variation the texture will be rough that is the example of a rural settlement a big rural settlement where we see lot of variation of tone that is why the structure is rough and in agriculture in case of agricultural land or wet land the tonal variation is less that is why we say it is a smooth texture so when there is a very rough or mottled the spongy texture then we, you can say that it it must be a settlement area because in rural settlement you have homestead you have mud houses then you have backyards and you have some small ponds inside the rural settlement some fields so total effect is a very rough and mottled texture so these are some spongy spongy mottled uh, pictures of rural settlement over an area here are examples of uh, areas with no tonal variation that is smooth moderate to smooth tonal variation no frequency forest area agricultural area those have a low frequency tonal variation whereas all the settlement areas harbors ports then big rural settlements urban areas they have a very high frequency of tonal variation these are no examples of settlement areas with high tonal variation this is example of bordhaman city and surroundings and that is pushchim medinipur city and surroundings so tone texture now let us concentrate on shape by seeing the shape of any earthly object you should be able to identify the feature for example a river has a typical shape a stadium has a typical shape a island a oxbow lake they have a typical shape and we should be able to identify the features on the basis of the shape these are some of the examples which uh, which helps actually to tell us by seeing the shape we should be able to identify the satellite image the various features of the satellite image this is the island those are the agricultural lands this is a meandering river and the oxbow lake a meander cut off actually and this is a typical planned settlement this is the example of salt lake uh, uh, city it is a planned city and that is why the structure is very uh, linear very straight and as if it is man made yes it is man made that is why the structure is like this the natural structures the natural features are very carved so there are more examples of shape that is these are this is river hugli and these are the various beels and oxbow lakes which are seen on the both side of the river and these are the typical shapes those are some some of the sand dunes and some man made tanks with square shape and also if the reservoir is natural then it has a very irregular shape and the white color shows the sand bars this is meander scroll this is the way you recognize a forest area now in the western part of the west bengal usually in exams what happen uh, satellite images of west bengal bihar are given so in this parts we have a lot of forest area and in the western part of uh, west bengal we have the rar upland and where we have lot of shal forest semi deciduous deciduous monsoon deciduous shal forest and the typical shape of this forest because uh, rivers come down along the slopes and the typical shape of the dissected infringed lobe shaped palm shaped are the typical shape of the forest 
All the trees shed their leaves and it may look dark brown during other seasons but during February March it have a greenish blue tone but in other times it looks very bright from April May June July August if you see the image this has a very bright tone in December it has a very bright tone So this is the appearance of a shal forest in the lateritic upland of Medinipur. See the typical petal patterns, the petal shaped. Now those were a natural forest. If you look into a tea garden or a social forestry area, it will have a geometric shape, not a natural petal shape or palm shape. So this is a, a man-made social forestry and tea garden with some systematic patterns. Size is also very important. Size helps us to identify or uh, the character of the asset. How high is the building? Now, by the help of the shadow, we will be able to know what is the uh, size of the building. If the shadow is bigger, then the size of building is high. If the shadow is less, then the size of the building is also less. So it helps to it uh, quickly approximate the size of the target object. Now, shadow is also a very interesting thing. Whenever uh, we receive an image with lot of shadows, if it is a mountainous areas, then it helps to identify the level of dissection of the mountains. There are two examples. In the first case, uh, the shadow is less and the second case, the shadow is more. The place where shadow is more, here we can understand the level of dissection, how rivers have cut down and river, how rivers are flowing along the dissected rugged mountainous tract. So shadow helps to identify or uh, understand the topographic characteristics of a place. Now uh, shadow has some, there are other uh, things in this part also like uh, sometimes if the image contains uh, clouds, the cloud also have some shadows, uh, shadows of clouds fall on the object and the interpretation becomes difficult. But if it is a cloud, same pattern black shade will come here because it is the shadow of the cloud on the surface of the earth. So by looking at the black patches and white patches of same pattern, we will be able to understand Oh, this is the cloud and the shadow of the cloud has fallen on the earth's surface. Okay. So, this is not a snow, not a sand, but a cloud. So, the next interpretation key is association. In association, we associate various geographical features with each other. It helps in identification of the objects. For example, in the standard FCC, we have lot of objects or geographical features which have red in color. We know all the objects which contain chlorophyll will appear red in standard FCC. But uh, we have to classify. For example, we have to know which red is for agriculture and which red is for forest. And again also what kind of forest. But using our knowledge, geographical knowledge, knowledge of associating one feature with another feature, we will be able to do that. For example, this is the coastal belt of West Bengal and Bangladesh. We know this is river Hooghly coming down and these are the islands of West Bengal, India and Bangladesh. And this is Bay of Bengal down below, black, dark and the sediments are flowing and lot of red on the edge of the coastal belt. It must be the mangrove forest of India and Bangladesh. So, 
this particular patch so we can associate that this red must be a mangrove forest and those red in the inland those must be the agricultural land the ruby cropped areas of the west bengal and coastal part of bengal and there are more inlands more black water bodies on north those are the inland wetlands east calcutta wetlands all those wetlands in the north so identification of all these features like mangrove forest uh, bay of bengal then <coughs> the ruby cropped area was possible by associating the geographical features with one another we can associate various features just by understanding the geographical condition for example this is the satellite image of krishna delta and the very a thin white line on the edge of the uh, land mass it indicates the sandy area the sandy beach and along the sandy beach there is some dense mangrove pockets so some more examples this is a residual hill covered by forest this is the ruby cropping area along river kongshavati in pashchim medinipur district this is the image of march where the cropping was not done this is the so we have to see multi temporal images we have to consult images of different seasons to know or understand or map the agricultural fields again another uh, agricultural land agricultural land or ruby cropping areas along river shilavati in pashchim medinipur district this is the gorvata block where a potato cultivation is done and we can see the red areas are all those potato fields but if you see the image of november it cannot be seen this is kolkata urban area that is kolkata mahanagari uh, during december under smog only multi spectral remote sensing data can monitor the ecologically sensitive areas that is wetlands low lying flood areas those black areas the east kolkata wetlands and the area which is under smog is kolkata municipal area and uh, metropolitan area but it is highly polluted so we can also understand the level of pollution these are some examples of rural settlement clusters of rural settlements with mottled uh, rough textures as i told you before and these are the tidal creeks of sundarbans and different islands of sundarban uh, these are the mangrove forest area and tidal creeks flowing in between but again there are some white scattered spots inside and those indicate these are the white spots and those indicate the salt water has encroached inside the Uh, forest area and their deposition of salt this is shagor island mousuni island and this is a typical mangrove one these are the reclaimed island and this is that particular island not is not reclaimed this is noyachor island so i am showing you these images because after seeing these images you will be able to know the different islands in our state how they look like in satellite image the very purpose of showing this image is how they look like in satellite image you have seen these maps in uh, oxford atlas or in survey of india topo sheet you have seen these areas but you have not seen these areas in satellite image in satellite image they look completely different and you have to know how they look then only you can associate and next time when you get a map in the exam or in some project work you can you will be able to identify the area and also prepare some map with the data this is the low lying 
depressions or wetlands, typical tone and pattern of wetlands. So this was the first part. Here I showed you the basic techniques of image interpretation, the tone, texture, shape, pattern, and how they look in a standard FCC. Now I will go to the next part. That is how to prepare a land use land cover map. Now the term land use, land use refers to the all these lands under human activity, under anthropogenic activity and land covers are the natural features, natural terrain, natural topography, a river, it is a land cover, a mountain, it is a land cover, glacier, it is a land cover. So it is the natural uh, features present on the surface of the earth. An inventory of land use land cover is prepared by government of India and it is widely used for planning. Now, our, uh, all the countries have their own land use land cover classification system. Our country also have such land use land cover classification system and NRSA, that is National Remote Sensing Agency, they have prepared one protocol for classification of Indian lands. The broad uh, classification is like this, there will be built up land, agricultural land, forest land, waste land, wetland and some other lands. Now let us look in details, what are the different types of, uh, subtypes of each and every a built up land and forest land. Now in built up land there are three types. One is some industrial area, there will be towns and also some rural areas. Some airspace, airport, dockyard, harbor, all this falls under built up land. And agricultural land is again of three types, the Robi cropped areas, the Kharif cropped areas and the summer cropped areas. Forest land in India together if you consider the Indian standard, there, there are also coastal belt and that is a mangrove forest, then evergreen forest, then deciduous forest, there are several types of forest. And each and every type of forest has a separate kind of tone that we have to understand. Again, wasteland also, there are four or five different types of wasteland. In Rajasthan, we have rocky, sandy waste. And then and there is um, a big uh, stony waste in Madhya Pradesh or in Jharkhand. And uh, there is also uh, like land with gullies, lot of gullies. West Bengal have land with lot of gullies and soil erosion is continuously going on. So we have to identify those kind of land. And there is also water bodies, there is wetlands, there is man-made water bodies, natural water bodies, reservoirs. So we have to know the protocol of identifying for the preparation of land use land cover mapping. Now if we start uh, doing the land use land cover mapping, you have to select the satellite image. Now best season for interpreting a built up area is October to March. You have to purchase or procure or download the satellite image between March to October. Here the urban area will be clearly seen, clearly visible urban area because in during other times if you purchase any image of monsoon period then there will be lot of clouds and so you have to purchase image of any dry season a download image of a dry season that is from October to March. So these are some of the examples of Kolkata built up uh, urban area, Jaipur and Ahmedabad. Here you can see how clear the urban area or built up area can be seen. Now from this uh, images you have to prepare the maps and you can also show that how the urban areas are 
uh, increasing in size. The, the, you can prepare a map of urban sprawl. Here multi-temporal satellite images are used. That is images of different years. They are used to prepare this map. It shows built up area, agriculture, land, water bodies. Now for agricultural land, if you concentrate on agricultural land, because land use means built up land, agricultural land. So if you concentrate on agricultural land, you will, again you have to procure multi-temporal data. Only multi-temporal data helps to identify the double crop, triple cropped areas. So these are some of the examples. For example, this is IRS once in these three image of November. Here see along the river Shilagati new cropping area can be seen. Whereas if you put, uh, acquire the image of February, you can clearly see a belt of uh, ruby cropped area along the river. So this is important. Here the river is more blue color can be seen in the river. There is more water in the river. But there the river is less. That is water has reduced, sandbar has increased, but the ruby cropped area can be seen. So by consulting multi-temporal data, multi-seasonal data, you will be able to prepare a proper authentic agricultural map and land use land cover map. So this is another example uh, showing the importance of multi-temporal data. This is part of uh, uh, Gorbata and surroundings where we can see during other seasons, during Dobi crop and other seasons, how the, there is change in agricultural area. So you can incorporate these changes or amount, total amount of agricultural land in the map. Now gullied and ravinous wasteland, land is land cover classification system of National Remote Sensing Agency Department of Space Government of India, they have some typical guidelines for preparing the gully covered areas and also all the other features. Now the green, bright green tone, all the areas with bright green tone, they are actually the bare debris crust surface, like uh, which is bare of any kind of vegetation. And the white lines flowing inside, that is the deep gully. Deep gully because it exposes the silica enriched horizon down below. That is why it is white in color. And there may be tonal variation. It depends on the moisture uh, condition of the area. But still, this is the broad color tone. And uh, this is the area the ball with a bad land and see how the area looks in a satellite image. It looks very bright green in color and this is the main uh, gullies flowing through the uh, ball with a bad land area and meeting river Shilavati. These are some of the tonal expressions of a stone quarry in Kalyam and stones and gravel areas of different parts of Medinipur. Now if you want to map the forest area, because uh, land use there you have done built up land, for land use you have done built up land, then agricultural land, you have identified agricultural land, Robi, agricultural land, Kharif. Now you have to do forest mapping. For forest mapping, you have to identify dense forest, open forest, degraded forest, scrub forest and forest blank. So at least for exam purpose, you have to identify dense forest, open forest and degraded forest. How you will do it? If you see the satellite image, then you will be seeing, if you consult with Survey of India topo sheet, you will get the total forest boundary. This is the total forest boundary. And in the total forest boundary, 
we have different patches of forest some are very dense some are open and some are degraded so we have delineated those patches like this similarly here also we have identified the total forest area and demarcated the dense forest and open forest inside the forest area so it is essential that you have a survey of india topo sheet with you with which you can be able to identify the forest area and what is the present condition of the forest uh, you will be able to know by consulting the satellite image the present condition the real condition that is why satellite image is also known as the real real time image because it gives you the actual present status of the forest so use of survey of india topographical sheet is very essential otherwise you will also be able to identify the forest area but still it gives you a more authentic feedback to identify the areas which have already degraded inside the forest area so then you have to demarcate the dense forest the waste lands the urban settlements rivers and here uh, if you see uh, several types of uh, uh, land use land cover classes have been identified from the satellite image the road the dense forest the settlement the open forest the degraded forest and again uh, the waste lands the mevnipur town all these could be identified from the satellite image by using the visual image interpretation technique and then a map has been prepared with proper land use and land cover class there are some more examples of map prepared from uh, satellite images like all if you see the map you can uh, it will show you it will show you the different land use land cover classes this is the land cover land use land cover map of part of a sundarbon it shows dense forest agricultural land settlements rivers this is another land use land cover map of a part of north bengal now all the land use land cover map must possess one title this this should be the title which we have to read write in exam that is it is a land use land cover map you have to mention the satellite that is it is based on irs 1d list 3 fcc image of october 2002 so you have to mention the satellite and also the year and you have to draw the scale and you have to prepare one legend like this you have to prepare the legend and these are some more examples of land use land cover map prepared by the students so thank you so much uh, i hope you will uh, you are able to understand how to prepare a land use land cover map and uh, see you in the next class